Fly your fair nation. Fly your fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. I've touched on this before on a previous episode, you know, dealing with anxiety and depression and being Caribbean. And it's something that I've had to actually come to terms with within myself, because at this point, it's like I've been recording since January and it took a lot for me to get to the point where I am now where I can actually accept and outwardly say I suffer from anxiety. OK, um, doing this show, I it's become more evident to me that this is what it is that I am going through and this is how I am going to categorize and say, hey, you have a problem, there's something going on with you that you need to address or at least pay attention to. Okay, so I've always known that I've been, I'm socially fragile, but I didn't realize how bad it was till I actually started recording. Like I dead ass chalked up my, you know, sweaty palms and super fast talking. Shortness of breath when presenting things is being shy because I had to speak in front of a class or do a presentation for my employees or anything that involved like talking to a large group of people. I thought it was just me being shy because for lack of knowledge and, you know, being Caribbean and things like that, you know, it's the first thing you say is like, stop going so shy, yeah, go on like say it's too shy, whatever the case is you sometimes don't get to call things for what it is because of predisposition ideas like I can't say you think you know but it it's a large range like dealing with like depression and anxiety like people are like oh you're just sad or oh you're just you know shy or, you're just nervous but it go there's levels to it like it gets deeper so it's like when I listen to the raw episodes of me doing a show, one of the main things I notice is my deep breaths. There was one episode where my anxiety was so bad that like it literally annoyed me. I sounded like I was going to die and I was gasping for air literally every second. Now, the gasping for air thing is normal because I'm the only person talking. So every now and then you hear I go because I'm catching my breath <laughs> because I'm talking and, you know, there's no one here to interact with. So it's just me talking, 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 talking until I have to stop and catch a breath. But... Most of the sound effects get edited out. Like, most of the sound effects get edited out. So, sometimes you hear a gasp where you hear a chuckle or hear me sneeze or whatever natural things that happen. I'm going to leave certain things in there. But there was this one specific episode where I literally got annoyed while I'm editing it. And I'm the person that's doing it. So, it's like, I know y'all are going to be annoyed. Like, why the hell is this whole breeding this fast? Did she have an asthma attack? Did she just run up the Empire State Building? Like, the shit was trash. Like, it was it was really, really bad. And I don't remember what episode it was, but one of the earlier episodes, I was thrown into Man in the Soundboard by myself last minute because my producer, we've discussed it before, you know, he, I guess, came to the conclusion like, listen, we're doing this today. And it wasn't something that we discussed, but we've always previously talked about what if something happens and he's not available? What if he's, you know, out of town or he has another um, thing to go to? He's he does videography, so what if he has a gig? Whatever the case is, he, like, presented me. It was like, like, he knows how I am about, like, you know, things like this because we've talked about me and my shyness or whatever you call it. And he's like, what if something happens and I'm not available for your show? You're just not going to do it? And, you know, <laughs> part of the stubborn me would be like, yeah, it's one episode. I can do it another day. But in reality, how many of that, like, how much time, like, I've, I don't like to depend on people to begin with. So it's kind of like, how often am I going to have to put off the show because I'm waiting on someone else to come in and do my sound? So it's not something that is far-fetched. It's not something that I didn't agree with. It was just like, throw somebody in the water and say swim. And I literally sounded like I was drowning that episode. Like, even with him sitting right next to me and, you know what I'm saying, the fact that the very first time I taped in January, I recorded everything that he was doing on both computers, like the soundboard, the audio levels, like everything, the things I'm supposed to monitor, I recorded everything so if anything happens I have my phone I have it saved so I can always go back and watch and like set everything up before I even start recording so even with him sitting next to me I had an anxiety attack while on air and I talked through it or at least I tried my best to but it's like the moment I sat in the chair like we walked in the room and he's like you're sitting here like I freaked the entire fuck out like I freaked out I started crying like even though I tried not to I tried to like calm down and everything and he's asking me like with genuine concern like what is wrong what's wrong and all I can say is nothing because honestly what the fuck was I crying about like honestly what was I crying about and it's not like you know like I felt like ambushed or anything. It's, eh, you know it's like 
I did need to learn how to do this. I did need to have first-hand experience because watching someone do something and recording it is not the same of as physically doing it yourself. So it's like, I... <laughs> Like I, I even like the other episodes that he was here, like the first um couple months or whatever, and I would sit and watch him set up and everything, and I know how to do it. Like in my mind, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know if it's the fear, fear of failure or the fear of like lack of experience or whatever the case is, but I freaked out bad, bad, bad. And after the show was over, I'm still reeling from the feeling. My heart was beating out of my chest. I couldn't slow down while I was talking during the episode. It wasn't a good place for me. And a part of me feels like it was so bad because it was sprung on me. Everyone who knows me knows that like, even though for the most part I'm down for shit, I like to know what's going on. I like to plan things. So you can be like, yo, we're going out of town next week. I'll be like, all right, cool. Okay, so what date are we going? What date are we coming back? How are we getting there? What time frame? What are we doing while we're there? Like, I like details. I like to know what I'm walking into when I do stuff. And it's like, that episode, I was only prepared to come in, put on my mic, sit down and start talking my usual fuckery. But the fact that I had to come in and sit down and set up and everything, it's like, it's bad enough I get anxiety doing the show as a whole just talking, but having to man the board and check my levels regularly and all that, like, it's to the point where I don't even use headphones when I'm recording. Like, when he's manning the board, I don't use headphones because he has on his headphones, that's one thing. And another thing is, like, I don't like the sound of my voice recorded. I mean, I heard that a lot of people don't like their own voice like recorded because there's some psychological thing about like the way you sound when you're talking, the vibrations within your body makes it sound different. So you might have more bass or whatever the case is. So when someone outward hears you, it sounds different to them. And I'm like, this is what I sound like to y'all? Like, ew. Like I really, I've always hated the way my voice sounded. Like even from when I was young, I didn't like putting my voice on like the answering machine and that shit. So I'm here podcasting. Makes sense, right? Do it for the love. Another thing why I don't use headphones is because I, I don't know if it's a cancer thing or what, but I've noticed that quite a few cancers, not just Shadow T and myself, like we talk, we're very soft spoken. Like we talk low and we, you know, keep our octaves lower and, you know, it's not very, we're not loud. Maybe, maybe it's just a few that I interact with because I try to stay away from my people, but that's one of the reasons I also don't wear headphones because I have on the headphones and I feel like I'm talking at a regular octave, but my headphones might be blasted to filth and I hear myself loud and clear, but y'all hear, thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast on the, you know, saying like it's, I'm whispering. So that's one reason why I also don't wear the headphones and Shadow always says that I'm sex talking into the mic. So like I have to, you know, constantly look at the levels and make sure, hey, I'm going further than these three notches. I'm going deep into the green you know what I'm saying because I'm not getting to red <laughs> let's be completely honest the only time I get to red is when I laugh or if I drop something <laughs> but it's something about me like I've always been this way and you know change is needed in all honesty it's just another thing that's gonna give me a stroke with it like you know I'm thinking like oh my god I can't even record properly by myself like you know without having to do anything else and now it's like I have to speak louder than I regularly do especially when I'm freaked out and I'm talk like I think I'm talking so loud and I look at the levels and it's barely touching three and then it's one of those things like when I was in school and I'd be doing presentations the teacher or whatever always be like okay speak louder project your voice we can't hear you or like I had this one teacher oh my god what a fucking dickhead he knew that I didn't like every time I used to go up to talk asshole with dead ass move from the front of the classroom and go to the back of the class and do the whole okay speak louder we can't hear you back here and I would just be like oh, the room starts shrinking everyone's face gets all blurred everything is melting into one I am sweating I have arm sweat my mouth is dry I gotta take a shit like <laughs> I want to throw up and you know with all that being said like it's real I know that some people go through it way worse than me and that happens and now I'm at a point where I am conscious of what I'm doing and I'm able to monitor what I'm doing so that I can do something about it but like when I was younger and those situations would happen I would turn mute like I would literally clam up I would stop talking I would feel like claustrophobic and it's a testament to how people need to learn how to deal with different types of people you can't do the same thing for everyone you can't expect the same thing from everyone but 
With all that being said, I really want to give a special thank you to all the people who have reached out to me about the show, all the people who have thanked me. Like, I get messages from people who are literally like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, no, thank you for listening. Thank you for making me feel like my purpose for doing the show is indeed valid. Not for validating me, but that my reason for thinking that this show is necessary is a valid reason. Like, you know what I'm saying? There are people who reach out to me and they're like, you know, I relate so much to this. Oh my gosh, like you're talking from like my mind. Like I feel you so much. And there's people that see trying like, oh my God, I did not know that this happened. Like y'all really go through this? Or oh my gosh, I never looked at it that way. And it's for all of those responses. It's for you guys to learn something, for you guys to understand, maybe give you some insight onto yourself, let you know that, hey, there's nothing wrong with you you're perfectly normal or whatever normal is and you know like just to help you self accept like help you to accept yourself if you're struggling with that if you're questioning yourself because you're quote-unquote different or whatever the case is hopefully this show helps you with that hopefully the things you do in your regular everyday life the things you see help you to accept yourself more because i mean we're all different and it's completely okay and for the people who are learning something like oh wow this is introducing me to something new it's here for that as well you know what i'm saying it's entertainment also if you just want to listen to me talk shit because i do that from time to time you want to laugh here and there you know i keep getting asked if i'm a comedian i don't i, I don't do that <laughs> but you know what i'm saying just whatever reason it is that you have for listening thank you and there is a need for this show some people and it's funny because i met someone the other day who doesn't listen to podcasts unless it's comedy and i figured that this would be a good platform because they're bahamian and a lesbian um dominant presenting and our whole interaction was just like i don't know if she thought i was trying to holler at her <laughs> i think that's what she thought because i um met her at work and you know i'm trying to get out of my shell i said on a previous episode i'm gonna start networking when i see people or whatever i'm gonna be like hey let me see your instagram I'm add myself add you on podcast like you know like put myself out there and I was reminded why I don't do that because Shorty slid in my DMs and I'm just like, uh, did you listen to the podcast? <laughs> and she's like, oh, is that what you did this for our subscribers? And I'm like, wait, what? Because before that, she's asking, are you a stud or a femme? And I'm like, who cares about labels? I We're all the same. We get naked. It's vagina and titties. Like, leave me alone. But you know what I'm saying? It's another thing that makes me anxious, like talking to people, because I don't want you to feel like I'm coming at you for the wrong reason. And then I don't want you to be taken aback when you realize, listen, you are not my type. I am not interested in you. I want you to understand that you're okay or whatever the case is, give you a different viewpoint on people that are similar to you that share similar thoughts and views and feelings you know what i'm saying so like i said it's thank you for everyone you know what i'm saying and i'm really grateful for y'all who listen to me you know episode after episode who look forward to listening to my episodes people that have reached out to me like yo where's the next episode it's been a minute sorry y'all my bad life been happening i'm dealing with this anxiety like y'all don't understand and then i tape i'm i'm low-key a grandma because I tape like 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night, EP, um, Eastern Standard Time, PM, whatever. And I get off work. I get home like around 5 o'clock. I'd be having to take a nap. Because if I stay up, I will get in here and I'll be half asleep. And I'm going to sound like, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, so on this episode, we about to, uh, like, <laughs> I'm going to be over it. And I'm not going to want to do it. Or, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I try to stay up and I end up falling asleep like 8.30, like, it's a lot. Like, I have to do a lot of preparation to come in here. So, you know what I'm saying? Thank you to, for the people who look forward to listening to the episodes. Even through my Sonic the Hedgehog speed talking, my mouth to severe anxiety attacks while on air. Sorry, not sorry. But, you know, I mean, I try to get all the hiccups out. You know, all the gasps and smacks and me tapping my fingers on the table and catching myself and all of that. I try to catch it, but sometimes I leave it in there because it's real and... These are things that, you know, you might hear and you might notice like, oh, shit, I notice I do that. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, sometimes if it's too much, I will get it out. I'll limit it. But y'all are going to have to do it <laughs> with me and my flaws because, you know, my moderate breathing, like I said, I said breathing. Oh, my God. Like I said, um, you know, I'm the only person in here. So I have to stop and catch my breath. You know, if I lick my lips or I'm... Like, I'm mad close to the mic right now. So y'all probably hear every smack and every <laughs> every sound I make with my mouth. Like, when I lick my lips and everything, I apologize for all of that, <laughs> you know. But thank you. Because, like I said before, I'm sitting in here in the dark by myself most episodes. And it's still a lot for me to 
do this seamlessly you get me like my anxiety is so bad like if y'all knew how many times i've started the show and stopped and started over and stopped because i literally could not breathe my chest gets tight i dead ass just start crying like real fucking tears and you hear me sniffling in the beginning of the episodes like retakes like i try to calm down i do breathing exercises like it's a lot it's a lot and I try to be respectful because this is a time slot like we pay for a certain amount of time to be in here and I try not to go over that time because other people have to come in and I just want to be mindful of other people's time so sometimes like if I realize that I'm acting up and it's taking too long for me to get it together it's like after 10 and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna die like <laughs> you know what I'm saying panic attack comes in and you know what I'm saying like I'm It's a lot for me. And some of you, like I said, like, you're probably listening to this like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck are you so nervous about? What do you... Everybody's not the same. You need to understand that. You need to respect that. Some people deal with attention and deal with talking to people like it is a motivational thing for them it is an adrenaline rush it makes them feel superb amazing wonderful like exhilarating like it is their thing they feel like they are in charge nobody can stop them and it's great go you and then there's some people who are indifferent to it there's some people who are like me who have to build up some courage, have to build up some gusto or whatever so that they can do it and then there's some people who are worse than me who like will dead ass pass out who will like throw up on the spot like you end up in a hospital like some people I know like have anxiety attacks and they end up in a hospital like and all for things that someone be like what the fuck what that's so small but it's not to them like you can't say how someone's brain chemistry works you not everyone works the same so you know what I'm saying like at one point like I used to drink in here like those of you who used to watch like when I used to go live like I used to come in the studio and I got my Ray and Nephew bottle I got my bottle of coke and you know I'm in here drinking and it's to the point that I don't even drink anymore when I go in because it literally does not help like I start drinking thinking it'll calm my nerves and the way my tolerance is set up I gotta be on the verge of drunk and (laughs) I'm not about to drink a whole flask of Ray and Nephew (laughs) I got work in the morning you know saying it's probably not a good idea especially since I'm doing this alone also like I have to drive home not gonna happen it doesn't work (laughs) so for those who are wondering that is really one of the main reasons also why I no longer promote listening to live tapings of this shit because y'all gonna be listening like what the fuck is this whole dying like I'm good but I'm not good at the same time like I've learned to live with my anxiety I'm learning to live with it better I've been learning to do things to actually help myself to you know moderate it and it's a learning experience for me like I said it took a lot for me to get to this point to realize and identify it for what it is and And if y'all are dedicated enough, y'all will find me when I'm on live and, you know, but it's going to be a while before I actually start promoting listening to this live. And I want to do Instagram live and all that stuff, but I'm going to be tongue tied trying to read y'all messages and reply and I have to talk loud and I got to look at the board and I got to do this. It's too much. So (laughs) for now, y'all just listen to these recorded episodes and, you know, thank you. honestly though one day I actually like it was bothering me like I was sitting here I was probably thinking about that same episode or a couple of them afterwards and I was like yo like what the fuck let me let me see what's going on you know so of course I logged on to Google because that's where I look for everything and I decided to Google anxiety attacks to make sure that I wasn't properly you know improperly diagnosing myself because I'm notorious for diagnosing myself I will tell you everything that is wrong with me because I'm the biggest critic and I could be loud and wrong as far as that goes but I was like, let me see if I'm, you know, I'm wrong or like if I'm on the right track. So using my doctorate in Google researching, I logged on and lo and behold, Google confirmed that I am not shy. Well, I probably am, but I'd be having full on panic attacks in this bitch. I'd be in this radio station messed up for real for real so according to google panic attack is the abrupt onset of intense fear or discomfort that reaches a peak within minutes and includes at least four of the following symptoms palpitations which is you know pounding heart or accelerated heart rate sweating trembling or shaking sensation of shortness of breath or smothering now the the heavy breathing you know the gasping for air it be cold in here 
Like, when we first come in, it is cold in here. And I be in here with a sweater, and my palms are sweating, like, clammy palms. Heartbeat thing, def- I got check, 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 and check. Everything on here is what I'm experiencing when I come into this station. And it's crazy because I be walking down the hallway to the studio, and sometimes, depending on the day or where I am mentally, I am walking, and literally, I see the hallway shrinking as I'm walking. Like, I feel like I'm Alice in Wonderland, and I done ate the cookie, and I done got bigger, and everything is just going small and it freaks me out sometimes like I said like I come in and I have to sit down and do breathing exercises before I start like I'll play music or if there's music already playing I'll let it rock and I'll be in here and I'm do all that and excuse me I have a cold right now and I'm sitting here and I'm talking I I do recite you know thank you for tuning into the pointless thank you for tuning thank you for tuning like you know I try to do it over and over try to calm myself try to go louder and I do all these things to make sure that for the most part I sound okay so that you guys can still get the message that I'm trying to put out you know what I'm saying even if it's fuckery I'm talking just so that you guys can have a good show (laughs) <laughs> so that I don't have to edit too much out so that I don't have to do too much amplifying on my voice because I do still have to because as loud as I think I'm talking even with these levels it's still not as loud as I would like it to be because I need y'all to go deaf with it. No, <laughs> let me stop but you know what I'm saying it needs to be audible it needs to sound good I was reading more you know because you know the internet and it says something where is it for doctors to diagnose a panic attack they look for you know the same thing I was saying shortness of breath trembling sweating choking sensation chest pain nausea dizziness fear of losing your mind fear of dying flushing feeling that danger is nearby a racing heart all of these things now granted sometimes I do get nauseous and the chest pains and all of that I don't feel like I'm dying I I don't sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind but I don't know if that has anything to do with this show but (laughs) honestly before I come in here I be feeling all types of sick I feel nauseous I'm lightheaded I'm paranoid my chest be tight as fuck like it hurts hurts and I know it's all the results of this and these are things that I've dealt with in different scenarios like all my life and I've always chalked it up to being shy because that's what daddy said or what grandma said or my teachers but I mean what do old school Caribbeans really know about anxiety and like chemical imbalances and things like that because in all reality like nowadays yes we're getting the technology we're getting the knowledge we're putting it out there we're accepting we're learning we're growing and maybe now as it's being introduced or as it's being confirmed or as it's being more properly researched we're able to identify it as such in our generation and we can probably introduce it to the older generation so that they can stop saying you're shy you're shy and call it for what it is you know what i'm saying so Hearing that all my life and thinking that, you know, whatever, people saying, stop going so shy. And even to this day, like, other people from my generation who will still call all of that being shy. And they may say you're overreacting when you say you can't breathe due to a panic attack because I just shy is shy or whatever. But like I said before, it's real. Like, there are people who, there are certain things they absolutely cannot do because of anxiety. Like, will literally pass out, will cry uncontrollably like you you know there are different side effects there's different things like you can't breathe like if you have asthma i'm sorry like you know what i'm saying there's a lot of different factors that go into there's a lot of different characters there's a lot of different reasons why people have anxiety it could be speaking in front of people it could be talking and knowing that people are going to hear you it could be going to a certain place even if you know what i'm saying it's not about people seeing you or anything like some people have anxiety i know a lot of women some women have anxiety about being in like a how do I say this being in a private setting with a member of the opposite sex regardless of it's somebody that they know or not I mean this can come from many different reasons I personally I have my qualms about that because there's some people that I'm I'm prejudging but also because I know that people are seedy that I feel like I feel myself shift when I walk into a room and I see that okay I'm gonna be here by myself with who um yeah and you'll see me pull my phone out and call somebody or like you know what i'm saying try to find another way because whether it's anxiety or safety like you can get anxiety from feeling not safe or you can feel not safe because of anxiety you get me there's different ways of going about it. there's different ways that it affects people so i mean don't be insensitive don't be a dickhead when someone tells you oh my god i feel like i'm gonna die like i feel like don't just be like oh my god calm down why are you being so dramatic why are you being so extra you're just shy it's not just shyness sometimes it's way deeper than that like i said there are some people who can moderate it like myself who i try to slow down when i'm talking i realize that i'm talking Low, so I need to speak louder. I breathe. I I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? And there's some people who they don't get to that point. Some people need medication. And a part of me, 
I don't smoke. So some of y'all probably listen to this like, bitch, go smoke some weed. I don't smoke. I've never smoked weed. Yes, I'm Jamaican. Yes, I was born there. Yes, I'm in my 20s. Most of my friends smoke. I've dated people who smoke. I've never done it. I'm not interested in it. It might help. It might help. But I have my own brainwashing as far as that goes, as far as controlled substances. And a part of me even played with the idea of, hey, maybe I should get like a script for anxiety and I can use that when I come into tape on Wednesdays. And in all honesty... As much as that probably would help with the talking and, you know, the side effects and the feelings and everything, I don't want to come in here and not have my personality naturally how it is being displayed while I'm talking. Like me giggling and me, my random side remarks and my energy and all that stuff. I have this fear that if I take drugs like for that, it's going to dull my personality. Now, granted, this does not happen to everyone. It happens to some people and different things affect different. And I don't want to like experiment with different, different drugs. And at the same time, I don't want to take away from who I am for this show. I mean, it's pointless talks, not pointless on anxiety medication <laughs> talks, you know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to work with it. Now, some of you are listening to that, like, yes, I feel you. But listen, you might need it for what your anxiety is stopping you from doing properly. So don't sit here and listen to me. And if you have a therapist or whatever, you can talk to them dosages, you can get lower dosage, like there's always options, there's always options. I personally used to self medicate with rum. Then I went on Google. Y'all want to hear what Google told me? <laughs> self-treatment for panic attacks avoiding caffeine nicotine alcohol and recreational drugs may help relieve fear and anxiety well bitch getting regular sleep and exercise ha huh. and practicing relaxation techniques such as deep breathing and yoga may also help well i haven't done yoga in a really long time but i do like i said my deep breathing but avoid caffeine coca-cola nicotine i don't smoke cigarettes i, I don't smoke i smoke hookah once in a blue moon but whatever that doesn't count alcohol so the first two out of three, I'm out here fucking up. So I'm glad that I did stop drinking. I don't know if that made it worse or not, but I just knew that it was not helping at all as far as calming me down or anything of the sort. Because like I said, I have a very high tolerance for alcohol and I'm not trying to be drunk <laughs> in here because, you know, I start slurring and it gets real fun. But I have work next morning also. <laughs> but that's why reading is also fundamental because I did not know that alcohol contributed to anxiety attacks or the fear or whatever the case it is you know what i'm saying like i didn't know that caffeine did that either but i mean it makes sense so the fact that i read that and i was just like yo that's that's wild i initially was like i'm gonna drink to calm my nerves and here i am reading this and it's like hey drinking does not help drinking induces this thing because whatever chemical like i said it's all chemical but like i said i want to thank everyone for listening for sticking it out with me and you know looking forward to these episodes and hit me up and checking on me like yo are you okay what's going on where's the next episode i love the show etc etc so Thank you to all of you, and we are going to wrap this up. As always, I'm going to tell you to get help. Always get help, whether you talk to a licensed professional or you talk to someone you trust, or if you talk to a complete stranger, you you realize you have a problem or if you see somebody who has a problem, help them. Help them. Being nice is free. Like, you don't have to be an asshole. You don't have to be selfish. Being nice is free. If you realize that you have a problem personally and there are options out there, like I said, I, I tell you guys all the time, you know, you guys can do online therapy, text and email, Skype, whatever. You can go sit on somebody's couch. You can do research. You can, you can there's a lot of different options, but don't, realize that you have a problem and ignore it because ignoring it will only fester it will not get better if you ignore it it might go away for a little bit but guess what just like history it'll repeat itself so take care of yourself you know because if you don't care about you who will with all that being said we're wrapping this up and just like every other week please don't forget to follow us on social media facebook twitter instagram pointless talks all the fun things apple music soundcloud google play music subscribe like us rate us leave all the positive feedbacks keeping a bad mind feelings them to and a self and whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. <laughs>